Right, good morning everyone. Tim from Bozzy Garage here. Welcome to a slightly unusual video. This is uh, how I like to spend some of my free time during the week, where we look at car auctions. Now, before COVID, a lot of the time I'd actually turn up to a car auction because you can look through the cars, open the doors, start them up, have a look around. Uh, and bid on a few. I have actually bought quite a few of my cars from auctions in the past. I've bought from Pickles. This is the uh, current uh, streaming that we have at the moment. It's a Pickles salvage auction. Uh, Manum Files, Gray's Auctions, uh, eBay, uh, random cars off Gumtree, Facebook Marketplace as well. Yeah, I think if there's been a dodgy way to buy a car, I've probably done it. Is it a good idea to do it? Uh, probably not. I mean, let's talk about the different ways you can buy a car. The most obvious one is go and buy it from a dealer or buy it from the online store if it's Tesla or one of the other new age EV manufacturers. Uh, yeah, you get the dealership experience, you get the overpriced <laughs> free coffee at your Mercedes dealer. Uh, you get um, someone trying to upsell you with paint protection, window tinting, fabric protection, rust proofing waterproofing all the rest of it you do get a new car you do get a new car warranty and you get a hell of a lot of car depreciation on it as well how do i know yeah i bought the tesla and the mg in the last year or so and they've probably depreciated a lot doesn't matter we'll talk about car depreciation another time uh the next level of buying a car private sale usually second hand i think by definition you will save a fair bit you're gonna have to go out to someone's house and test drive it negotiate and do all that sort of stuff too that that's fun um, you do save a lot compared to buying it secondhand from, say, a dealership. Then you go to things like, oh, car yards, the discount ones, you know, car city out in Ringwood if you're in Victoria. Um, you know, the, the, the wholesalers, let's call it. Where do they get their cars from? They, they get their cars as uh, cheap trade-ins from other dealers who are trying to get rid of them. Let's say you've got a Toyota, you've got to buy a, a Volkswagen. They trade in your car at Volkswagen, but they don't want it sitting on their used car lot. They, they like Volkswagen, so they on-sell your second-hand Toyota onto, say, an auction site like this one here, or onto a, a used car lot um, mega dealer thing. Now, this is the... I'm going to call it the bottom of the barrel. When you, when you talk about things like this, car auction websites like Pickles, Grays, Mannheim... Uh, they're really for the brave, let's call it. Unless you kind of know what you're doing, you probably shouldn't be doing it. The reason is, you don't really get much in the way of a warranty. You don't get really to inspect the cars apart from a quick poke around. You can start them up most of the time, can't drive them. Uh, and again, there are a, a lot of okay buys and there are a lot of really bad buys too. So... Uh, if, if you see something like a, uh, a KE model CX-5 diesel, which is a, a Mazda, at an auction site, yeah, don't touch it. It's probably got a dead engine or it's probably on its fourth dead engine. So you, you kind of got to know the history, the the vibe, the uh, the common downfalls of cars that you're looking at. So why do I mention the Mazda CX-5? Yeah, pretty common example of a, a bad secondhand buy uh, in a diesel, in the KE model, which is 2012 to 20. 16 give or take i had a petrol model cx5 2014 which was actually a fantastic car my mum still got it i gave it to her to drive around but the diesel ones if you look on the owners groups on facebook or on the internet plenty of people on the second third fourth engine plenty of them buying them cheap thinking they got a deal you haven't got a deal you've just got a real dud unfortunately and uh yeah not great resale value on them i've seen them go for like three grand running driving or running anyway on on auction sites uh anyway enough of me blabbing on why are we on this website today i was uh, doing my usual browse last week and i saw a couple of cars which i'm actually kind of maybe possibly <laughs> interested in buying don't tell my wife i've really got too many dead cars in the backyard um i'm gonna see if i can scroll down here on the window to find it let's see if if this works here it is this one uh nope not that one I'm going to scroll down a little bit further. Okay, this is one I'm interested. It's a 2004 Honda Civic Type R. It's an EP3 model, which is the K22 litre four-cylinder made in the UK by Honda Motors UK. Pretty rare car in Australia. I can't remember the last time I saw one driving around. My brother used to own one. Great thing. This one here, clearly, a little bit of damage. You can see, uh, hopefully you can see it streaming. The front bumper is kind of a bit dead. And there's a big dent here in the front left guard, missing a headlight. But, you know, apart from that, it's actually in pretty good shape. Now, <clears throat> like I said earlier, this is what we call a salvage auction. So this is not 
uh, an auction for perfectly good cars actually it's pretty much the opposite a lot of the cars going through auction if you keep an eye on the top left corner of the streaming here you'll see have had some sort of visible damage and the other thing too is there are three levels of cars that you can buy at this auction uh, well in, in my opinion anyway you've got what we call statutory write-offs which means that they've been so badly damaged that they cannot be put in the road at all ever again in australia good for parts though especially if you've uh, got another project card that, project card that you need to strip down the next level which is probably the most common I think you see in these auctions are called repairable write-offs they've had some damage uh, for example if you look at this car that's currently there that is a well it's quite a nice car that's an i30n I reckon um, mm, definitely looks like it beautiful sky blue Hyundai color great car sounds good anyway off topic if you look here where it says WOVER status W-O-V-R stands for written off vehicle register status it is a repairable write-off this one can be repaired now, why is that this auction if it can be repaired? Well, someone had insurance, they had an accident. Insurer says, mm, gonna be, we got a quote from the body repair shop and whatever, it's, it's too much, we don't wanna pay for it. So um, yeah, we'll just pay you out in the car and we'll send this car for this, this car auction here and see if some idiot like Tim's gonna go and buy it. So it is repairable, but the insurers just didn't wanna go through the hassle of it because body repair shops, they're, they're charging a massive premium nowadays. Uh, so yeah, you, you have the chance now if you're brave to buy a repairable write-off now it's not as easy as just buying a new bumper painting up slapping it on and putting plates on it uh, i've got a mate good mate of mine who uh, is quite a big uh, player in the jdm car import scene he's bought a few repairable write-offs and he says he'll never do it again and he's got a workshop mechanics on site knows all the body shops in the area the thing is they have to be repaired to virtually factory standard you need proof of parts paint repairs photos of the damage proof that's been repaired to the right standard you can't just put a bit of bog in there or some sticky tape and paint it up no it's actually got to be done to a reasonably high standard so for that reason uh we're going to avoid buying repairable write-offs i've never bought one don't really plan to do one uh the car that oh, let's, let's, let's look at the bottom left corner again too this uh type r which i'm interested in, in buying this is a car which is not on the written off vehicle register it's a bit hard to know if you can see it there uh there's a lot of pink writing on the windscreen and it says do not fork so don't shove a forklift through it and lift it up move it around it's actually in reasonably good condition crappy cars they don't care if you put a forklift on it or not mm dirty of course probably hasn't been moved in about six months engine bay looks relatively stock actually let's go back to the beginning let's say i'm looking at buying this car which i am the most important thing is to really carefully look at the photos of course right so you can tell by the dust on it hasn't been moved for a while when you look here you can see that again it's a bit small i don't know <laughs> this is the first time i've ever done a stream i don't know how to blow it up uh it looks like the bonnet is a little bit lifted up there's a big dent here which i, I reckon i can bang that out and get get onto it i've, I've done a bit of uh, work in my time i've actually i did the body kit and spray painted that in my backyard for um, the, the s15s i've got mm, looking at the side here no damage along the side uh fuel cap yeah, it has got a fuel cap that's great dusty again at the back there uh looking at the engine bay now this is always quite important you want to see if there's been any modifications done so some are fine some maybe you have to be a little bit careful of this one's got looks like a, a silicon intake from the airbox which is that unit there to the intake um it's got a sticker it's got a little aftermarket radiator cap there uh see watch list alert let's see if it's coming up soon actually um it's lot number 49 we're at number 42 currently uh it has an import plate which is important this car was never actually sold in australia officially so that pink import plate means that it's been imported properly it's been looked at by a workshop it meets australian standards and it can be registered it actually has got plates on it uh, and if you look up on vic roads it'll tell you that the registration has been cancelled again again that's a good thing uh, it means that you know that the car has actually been on the road before that's all fine mm, we've got the vin sort of uh, stamped onto there now if you are looking at buying a car a salvage car well obviously you're gonna have to put a fair bit of time money work love into it and i love doing that i, I like fixing old cars it's the only reason i'd buy a petrol car nowadays to buy something broken so i can fix it uh, now the thing about this is it's kind of only worth doing <laughs> Well, if you could buy a, a good example of this car, running, registered, roadworthy, and whatever for the same price, well, why would you actually buy a, a smashed one? You, you probably wouldn't. So let's look in this top box up here. Uh, I'm going to show you roughly how many of these are in 
uh, available for sale at the moment. We're going to call it uh, EP3 Type R. EP3 Type R. And there are nine cars available for sale on car sales at the moment. Uh, let's have a look at what's available there. So we've got an O2 model with 80,000 K, 35 grand. Okay, asking a little bit more than maybe you'll get, but hey, why, why wouldn't you? COVID drove all the prices up. COVID prices are kind of crashing though. So yeah, good luck with 35 grand, 28 and a half, 27, 17, well below market price. Now, market price is based on how many cars are for sale. There's only nine for sale. Uh, and if it's one of the cheaper ones, well, it'll call it well below market price. 170,000 K, uh, it's in the championship white, which is beautiful. Mm, South Australia car, yeah, 18 grand. So let's say there's a bit of room for movement there. They might take 15 or so. Um, so 15 grand, there's another one for 18. 15 grand might be about the going rate for something like a Honda Civic Type R in, in good condition. Mm, so how much should I pay for this uh, Civic here? I was asking my brother about this the other day. Uh, he reckons about three grand, four grand. Sounds about right to me, really. You've got to add on a few fees to any car that you buy at auction. So uh, one of the fees might be, oh, I think it's 10% or minimum $500 or $1,000. Um, it's pretty easy to find out the fees. Just go to the uh, auction website and there'll be a page setting it out pretty clearly. How do you register to be a bidder at this auction? You know, put your address in, your credit card details, your driver's license, that's about it. Um, anyone can buy from the salvage auction as long as it's not a write-off car. So buying this uh, car which isn't written off, it's not a repairable write-off, it's not a statutory write-off, that should be fine. Uh, if you want to buy a written off car, you actually do need to have some kind of uh, disposal license or salvage license uh, just to show that you can recycle and um, get rid of any parts uh, without just burying it in the backyard. So if we have a look here, we're almost at the car I'm interested in. There is another one actually after this Honda Civic that we'll, uh, we'll look at too. It's coming up a couple of cars later. As you can probably tell, these cars go through really, really quickly. Uh, it's rare for an auction on a salvage uh, car to go longer than a, a minute or two because they haven't got all day to sit around. You can't inspect them. This is an online-only salvage auction. You can, of course, do in-person salvage auctions too, but this is an online one only. So, uh, yeah, like to live dangerously, why not? Buy a car that you've never seen, you've never heard it turn on, you've never touched, felt driven it, you haven't even looked at it. Now we're coming up to the car I'm interested in. So I'm going to get my headphones on so I can hear what they're talking about. I'm going to shut up for a moment. There's the 04, circa 04 Civic. But have a look around it, guys. Have a look at red badge. Have a look at the red R on the back. It's the R-Type Civic, guys. Nice truck. Nice truck, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to kick How it away much? today at a very, very low $3,000. Take quarters <laughs> and it will make seven grams. Go three and three wow. quarter part. Three, oh. three, 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 four. Five. Go hot hatch, guys. Mm -hmm. Hot hatch. Five quarter Six. five. five. Six. <sighs> Six quarter five. Three, 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 get me to seven up on the market. That's right. Selling now. I think every opportunity to buy <laughs> these cars. Guys. You might ask, why does I start low? Because every opportunity to buy this import today. Import cars mm -hmm. selling out. Everyone wants it. Eight, 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 ten, fifty now. Nine grand. Eight, 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 this will sell oh, in the next wait. couple hundred bucks. Eight, seven, nine, 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 quarter. So I want you to get your private one. buyers out there. Just click the mouse. Don't pause. Don't wait. It's not eBay. You'll miss out if you pause it. I don't nine, babe. Wow. Two, one, eight, eight, seven. At nine, nine thousand seven, five hundred. As five. I said, sir, it's not eBay. There's not a time o'clock. You've got a live auction here, <laughs> a live clerk. Wow, uh, what did that go for? If you look at the bottom left here, it'll track everything. It sold for nine and a half grand. Good price for the seller, actually, or the insurance company who's getting rid of it. Again, let's go back to the top right window where we're looking at what you can buy in car sales with room for negotiation. Okay, 20s, 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 a couple in the mid-teens. You used to be able to buy these for 10 grand before COVID, and then COVID happened, and we all know what happened with COVID. Everyone went mental and paid too much for too little. Um, so yeah, let's call it 10 grand even, maybe 11 once you include your, uh, your your auction fees, your selling fees, your transport fees. You can't go and go to, down to the auction lot and pick it up and drive it away. You've actually got to get it out on a truck or a, uh, a trailer or someone authorized to take it away. Um, now, the other car I'm interested in, uh, should, what should we say about the Civic? Was it a good buy? 10 grand? Look, not for me. 
if it was half of that, yeah, I would have taken it. But clearly, you could see how many people were interested in. The thing about JDM cars, Japanese domestic sport cars like this, rare cars from 20 years ago that you don't see much, there will always be a market for them. That's why I'm still trying to collect them. Uh, new cars are literally a dime a dozen. I mean, okay, you've got to pay more for them, but there's no shortage, there's no limitation, there's no scarcity. It's kind of like the housing market anyway. I mean, you could buy an apartment with 400 other apartments around it. Who cares? But if you buy a house, that's the only house on that only block of land. Uh, anyway, what do I know about property? Not a great deal. Uh, looking back at the car sales, again, not many for sale. Nine in the whole country at various price points. So if you're an enthusiast like me and you wanted a project like me, okay, maybe 10 grand isn't actually so bad. Now, the next car I'm interested uh, in buying today, oh, look, this is going to be a bit of a stretch because uh, I probably really shouldn't. It's the next car after this one, after this highest. It is a CLA 45. Um, 2016 model, I think. So anyone who knows about uh, AMG Mercedes would know that the A45 in both hatchback and coupe, coupe sedan, I think they called it, um, they were the first AMGs to come out with a four-cylinder, four-cylinder turbo and four-wheel drive as well, actually. So the first one came out, <clears throat> I think, in around 2013, so 11 years ago, let's call it. Uh, so after 2013, there was a facelift in 2016 and you know, minor, minor little changes, nothing massive at all, but um, really nice wheels on this one. Well, we're going to wait for it to come up because it's going to come up in a couple of seconds here. Mm, dark blue color, nice 19 inch silver wheels, uh, a stolen car. Good thing about this one, it actually comes with one key. Some of the salvage cars, they don't have any keys at all. And for something really old without an immobilizer or transponder or whatever, uh, which is at least 20 years old, it's not going to be a problem, but newer cars with immobilizers uh, and electronics going to be a little bit harder for you to get a key program cut coded to the car. It could cost you 500 bucks to a grand or so, depending on what kind of car it is. Anyway, this Mercedes coming up. The CLA45 has got one key, so I can get that one duplicated. I'm already talking like I own it. I don't own it. I should shut up. It's only got 64,000 kilometers on it or something. Definitely don't need it. <laughs> oh, here we go. I'm going to put my headphones on. Just listen. Team plate CLA. <laughs> oh, my apologies. It is the uh, Wabrane guys. Wabrane CLA. Second of the prestige stock today. I'm going to kick it away today at ten thousand dollars. I'll take Ooh, five cheap. and let's get to twenty five grand. And I can get ten. Get ten. Stolen recover. Theft police car. Ten Doing five. Up. Eleven five. Twelve Watch five. Thirty five. I'll just stop. Seventeen five. Eighteen five. I don't think I'm going to get five. Get to twenty five. Well, I was hoping for under twenty, but market. clearly I'm dreaming. Twenty five. Put it on the market. Get me twenty five. Put it on the market. There it wow. is on the market. Selling. I don't get twenty. I'll get twenty seven now. Mm -hmm. I don't get twenty nine. Twenty seven. No. Twenty five. Twenty eight. I don't get twenty eight. Five. Twenty nine. I don't get twenty nine. Thirty grand. I get twenty nine. Five. I don't get twenty nine. Five. Selling. I get thirty and thirty and five. I get thirty and five. At thirty nine. Five. I get thirty one. I get thirty one. I got three one, I got three one, I got thirty one now, three one five, at thirty one five, thirty one thousand five, at thirty one five, thirty one five, thirty one thousand five, at thirty one five, my instructor is Sal. South, south at 315, 315, 315, at 315, 315, 315, 315, 315, 315, 315, 315, 315, 315, 315, 315, 315, not a great deal of damage. Like body actually looked pretty good on it. Um, wheels, okay, a little bit of curb rash. Everyone's got that. Dirty interior, fine. You can clean that. Uh, Thirty-one and a half thousand plus fees. Let's call it mm, thirty-four grand, roughly, out the door. Bit of work to fix it up. Get a roadworthy. Get another key cut. Okay, yeah, not not a massive saving, but uh, if we look here at car sales again, I think it was about three hundred CLA forty-five for sale on car sales at the moment. So compared to nine of the Honda Civic Type R, yeah, far more of them available. Like I said before, new cars are just a, so plentiful. There's no scarcity in them. So unless you're talking something really super exotic, modern cars are not great. Let's use the term investments. Investments are something that go up in value. No, generally, all cars depreciate unless you're lucky enough to really pick random supercar level things like you know Porsche GT3 RSs and um, various Ferraris, Lamborghinis, all the rest of it too. Interestingly enough, though, if you pick the old JDM cars, if you were lucky enough to get in sort of 10 years ago, you can actually make a lot of money on them. I imported uh, an, a Skyline GTR R33 Series 3 V-Spec for about 18 grand back in the day. 
And then I made the worst decision of my life. Uh, my my auntie was selling a BMW coupe. And I thought, oh, yeah, that, look, that looks nice. I'll, I'll sell my GTR for that. I got 20 grand or something for my GTR. My aunt decided not to sell the Beamer. I bought this really crappy Audi from an auction. I think it was Pickles as well. Oh my God, Audis are the worst, shittiest cars in the world. Anyway, horror story. They sold it after six months. What a piece of rubbish that was. Um, and yeah, now that GTR is probably worth 80 to 100 grand. Five times what I paid for it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, love my JDM cars. I should have stuck with them. Should have gotten rid of all those stupid European cars a long time ago. I've had other European cars which uh, haven't been a lot of fun. Anyway, so let's. Uh, I don't know how this works. There, yeah, that's my dog's ear in the background. Anyway, looking at CLA forty fives, a twenty sixteen model like the one that just went to the auction around market price fifty grand. Lower kilometers though. Uh, I would say, yeah, that by just then, oh, not great, not not terrible, but you're not really saving a great deal of money over something that you could have test driven, negotiated on price, gotten a road worthy from the seller, maybe a warranty if you got it from a dealer, I don't know. Um, so yeah, anyway, just a, something interesting to look at, but certainly not something that I'm going to uh, pay 30, mid 30s for, for a salvage site. Um, anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to wrap it up there. This is a bit of an impromptu stream video about buying cars at auction. I pretty much do this every week. I sit here with a cup of coffee, I look at cars, go through, I make a list of what I could buy, what I shouldn't buy. I'm kind of running out of room to park all these cars and insurance and rego is a bit of a killer. So um, I might actually have to sell a car or two in the next um, six months or so. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. If you're interested in buying cars at auction in Australia, uh, stupidly, <laughs> please comment below and uh, we can do this, this again and we can find out if you're going to be as dumb as me and buying a lot of car auction, uh, car auction cars. Um, anyway, I'm going to get back to cleaning up the old Integra DC2 Type R. Uh, I pulled the back seats out of it yesterday. Heaps of mould everywhere. It's like Ebola and World War Z in there. So we're going to steam clean it, wet dry vac it, let it dry out in the sun. Uh, anyway, my name again, Tim from Bozzy Garage. Thanks for watching all the way through. Kind of boring. I'm just sitting here in my beanie. But um, yeah, good to talk to you and I'll catch you in the next one.